I'll tell you what. Our next speaker is an absolute fireball. I am proud to call her a friend and a colleague. And I got to tell you, people who don't think grizzly bears don't come from Arizona haven't met our next speaker because, boy, when her rights are ruffled, boy, she protects the Cubs by coming out with the claws. Our next speaker, past president of the National Rifle Association, please take your feet, Sandy Froman. Jim and Holly for inviting me here to be with you tonight. It is really, really a pleasure to be here, to be with the folks from Goal. Um, you know, when I first heard about Goal, it was many, many years ago when I first got involved with the NRA, and I asked somebody, what does Goal mean? And they said, Gun Owners Action League. And I said, action? That's a heck of an idea. People actually taking action to protect their rights? And that's what you folks do, and you do it very, very well, and you do it you know, I'm from California, so I'm, I know what it's like to fight behind enemy lines. You guys do it behind enemy lines, and you ought to give yourselves a big hand. <laughs> now, I've spent a little bit of time with Jim and Holly, and uh, he comes to the NRA board meetings, and, you know, it's really interesting. He is very, very well regarded by the members of the board of directors, and sometimes some of those folks also run state associations, so there's a lot of good networking that goes on at our NRA board meetings. And that was where Jim actually asked me if I would come and, and, uh, and speak to you here. Now, I spent three years here in Massachusetts about 35 years ago. Um, states changed a little bit, but I actually had forgotten how lush and beautiful and green it was. I'd also forgotten about the humidity. I want you to know that my hair is straight in Arizona. Uh, so it's been, it's been kind of amazing. Um, and you also ought to be proud of your board and your volunteers, because this is, this is a group that really makes things happen. And, you know, one of the things that the NRA is all about, it's about the grassroots. And Wayne up here, who travels all over the country, uh, up and down, north and south, east and west, he basically recognizes and I think acknowledges people that, that the NRA couldn't do anything. I know Alan would agree with me that uh, Citizens Committee for the Right to Keep and Bear Arms and Second Amendment Foundation couldn't do anything, and certainly Goal couldn't do anything without people like those of you in this room. You are the backbone of what happens in the gun rights movement. So thank you for that, for, for being such stalwarts, for making sure that we never give up. You know, Clint Smith, a good friend of mine and a very well-known firearms instructor says, you know, sometimes it, sometimes you got to cheat to win. So don't, don't give up on that. Um, you know, like many of you in this room today, uh, I'm a child of the 60s. I, I grew up in the heyday of television. The, we had a giant console RCA TV. It arrived in our house exactly one year after I was born. And yes, I watched the Mickey Mouse Club, I admit it. Um, but what really captivated me as a young girl were television westerns. Those westerns were the morality plays of my generation. There were good guys and there were bad guys. And you knew who the good guys were because they wore the white hats and they smiled. Yep, Marshall Dillon. They smiled and their horses had cute names. Remember that? And the bad guys wore black hats and they were snarly and mean and they had facial hair. Sorry, Jim. And, and sometimes they whipped their horses. So you knew who the bad guys were. But you know what? What I remember was that there were guns. There were lots of guns in those television westerns. There were single action Colt pistols, there were Winchester lever action rifles, and there was the occasional shotgun that the bartender would bring up from behind the bar when the ranch hands got too rowdy. Every western that I watched, uh, you know, Gunsmoke, Maverick with James Garner, Sugarfoot with Will Hutchins, Cheyenne with Clint Walker, and don't forget the women, The Big Valley with Barbara Stanwyck, one of my role models from my childhood. Uh, uh, Clint Eastwood, Chuck Connors, we all remember the Rifleman. Everybody had plenty of guns. The good guys had guns and the bad guys had guns. And you know what? It's pretty much the same today. The good guys have guns and the bad guys have guns. Now, the bad guys in those TV westerns used their guns to frighten and intimidate and hurt people. 
but the good guys used their guns to protect and defend people. And occasionally they would also use their guns to demonstrate their shooting ability uh, by hitting tin cans off the fence post a long ways away to convince the bad guys not to mess with them. Now, I was happy that the good guys had guns because they kept the bad guys in check. Think about what would have happened in that town, and there's probably a dozen TV westerns that were all based on this theme. Think what would happen if the guns got confiscated by, from the good people. You know, big sign up in town, everybody has to turn in their guns, so the good people run right up there and they hand in their guns. And what do the criminals do? They don't hand in their guns. You know why? Because they're criminals. Like, who doesn't get that? <laughs> who in Washington doesn't get that? Now, you know, the good guys kept their guns because that was the only way they were going to keep the bad guys in check. And going back to the women again, and I'm really pleased to see so many women here tonight. Think about those self-reliant frontier women of my childhood television westerns. Armed only with a 30-30 ranch rifle, a frontier wife could put meat on the table, keep the fox out of the hen house, and repel marauding bears or two-legged hostiles. You know, all while her husband was out on the North 40 rounding up the cattle. They didn't need to call 911 to take care of the family. Now, those morality plays that I watched growing up and that a lot of you in this room watched helped to form my character. They taught me that there are good guys and there are bad guys, that there is evil in the world, and that we have an obligation to fight against evil whenever and wherever we see it rise its ugly head. And that's what we do when we defeat bad gun bills in the state legislature, in Congress. That's what we do when we go out and we campaign for good candidates for public office who believe in our constitutional rights, and we do everything we can to defeat candidates who don't respect those rights. Well, I'm still watching television today, not as much as I did when I was a kid. And I'm still watching, and you know what? I'm getting more and more worried that if we don't work harder, and if we don't do more, that the bad guys are going to win this time. You know, those of you who are here tonight, those of you who are involved in the political process, those of you who are involved in protecting your constitutional rights, you're the exception in America. It used to be that everybody cared about their rights. But you know what? A lot of us have come to take them for granted. A lot of our friends and neighbors have come to take them for granted. Life in America overall is pretty easy. Uh, it's probably easier than it was for our fathers, easier than it was for our grandfathers. But it's not going to be easier for our children if we don't hold the line, if we don't hold the line on freedom and make sure that our freedoms are not given away. And I say given away and not taken away because you know what? Nobody can take our freedom from us unless we relinquish it. When John Bolton was the ambassador to the United Nations for the United States, what a great patriot he is. He, yes. You know, Alan and, and Julianne were just at the United Nations and I've been there too. I've spent a lot of time there. And it is ugly. I mean, if you have not been to the United Nations, if you not, have not seen what a travesty of freedom uh, it is, it's, it's shocking. It's like being on another planet. But John Bolton held the line. He basically said to those folks at the UN who wanted to take away the gun rights of Americans, in, in the guise of, of preventing the proliferation of small arms. Well, I was asking, what do they mean by small arms? Well, they mean pistols and rifles and shotguns, in the guise of trying to make the world safer for democracy, 